Okay, so in the Hackaday article that got me to do this entire series in the first place, one of the first questions they wanted answered is, quote, what does the actual workflow of 3D printing look like? What happens from beginning to end? So that's what we're going to look at today. The full process from going to want to print something to having a physical usable part. Now, this video is brought to you by the Elugu Mars and Elugu's translucent SLA resin. The Elugu Mars produces strong and high detailed parts without breaking the bank and the Elugu SLA resin is a reliable choice that works with virtually any SLA or MSLA printer. Check out the links in the video description and use this coupon code for 10% off Elugu's resin on Amazon.com for the next 7 days. Okay, so the thing the actual 3D printing process always starts out with is a 3D model. Last week in episode 5 we looked at all the different options there are to get models. For this video I've got this battery bank model that a friend is working on. I broke the handle on it so I'm going to be printing him a new one. So in Fusion 360 I'll export just the handle as an STL file and take that over into the slicer. Now just like for models I've already covered all the basic functions of a slicer in the previous video episode 6. For this model because it's 201 millimeters wide I'll be using the Mark III and I'll be making sure it is oriented correctly on the build plate so that I get nice, strong and continuous layers from the area where it gripped the handle to where it is attached. Filament printers produce their strongest parts when forces can stay within one layer and don't have to be transferred from one layer to another. Because this model was designed with 3D printing in mind, we don't need support material here, but I'll head over to the print settings and give it an extra shell just to stiffen it up a bit and make it a bit stronger around the hinge area. That's where that first part broke. For filament I'll be using PLA. Uh, both PLA and PTG would have worked but since it's a relatively large part it might be tricky to do with ABS, ASA uh, or polycarbonate. Now PLA doesn't quite have the temperature resistance of those materials um, but since this is a part for basically a big old battery in a box I would probably worry more about the actual lithium ion cells than the PLA case uh, you know if temperature did end up becoming a problem. And also I only have the Miss Pink uh, color in Prusham and PLA. So I'll be using that which means I'll grab the PLA profile in the slicer. Quick look at the print preview, this is looking good so I can save it over onto in this case an SD card, other machines use USB drives, safely move it and move on to the printer. So on the printer I'll pop in the SD card. Um, the first thing I do is to check if there is stuff from the last print left on the bed. So we've got this piece of skirt left on here that's stuck down pretty well. And if the last print had trouble sticking or I touched the bed too much I'll wipe it down real quick. All right. If the printer already had the right filament loaded up I could start printing at this point. But we still need to swap in the pink PLA. So I go to preheat and choose the preheat preset with the higher temperature out of the filament uh, that's already in there and the one that I'm loading in. So this is PTG already in here I'm loading PLA so I'll use the hotter PT preset. Once the hardened is at temperature I can click unload filament. Go and then I can load in the new filament. The old roll of PTG goes back into the dry box in a second. All that's left now to do is to start the print. Usually I'll just watch the first layer and if that goes down without lifting the rest of the print is usually going to be fine too. Uh, but that's just experience in being able to judge which models are going to work well and which won't and trusting your machine not to mess up. Yeah, this first layer is looking good so let's keep this printing. Oh, this, this is taking too long. There we go. So there it is. The printer is cooled down which means the print should have released from the bed. If not a quick tap it's gonna break it free. There we go. Um, I like to use the print itself to go ahead and scrape the skirt off of the build plate as well as the prime line up here so that the printer is ready for the next print. 
And that's really it. You know, there's the print. It's ready to use right away again because it's been designed specifically for 3D printing. If you have printed something with support material, for example, um, now would be the time to remove that. A combination of prying and snipping tools like flat screwdrivers, pliers, and flush cutters work well. Or if you wanted to make the print look a bit less like a print, you could also go through the full finishing process. Uh, for PLA, you can use pretty much any technique, be it filler, primer, and paint, or wet sanding the parts, um, or using whatever approach you like, really. If it's a part that's intended for a functional application, drilling holes to their final size, tapping threads, or adding threaded inserts is something that's easily doable with tools made for metalworking as well. So lastly, on the printer itself, if you've got a moisture sensitive filament loaded in there and you know that your ambient humidity is not always super low, it makes sense to unload filaments that are sensitive to moisture now, like PTGs, nylons, which you probably should be printing straight from a dry box anyways, uh, ABS, all of those profit from being kept in a sealed, dehumidified container. Turn the printer off, and that's it. Now, the process I showed is assuming that your printer either came with good profiles that are already optimized for the different filament types, or that you have gathered or tuned profiles yourself that are just ready to go already. If you don't have profiles that you know work for what you're trying to print, um, with the printer you're trying to use, it might be a bit of a back and forth between slicing the part, um, checking how it prints, and then going back into the slicer and changing a handful of things, and then seeing if things have improved. Like I think I said before, having good, reliable profiles is, I think, way more important than what exact hardware you're running these days. But anyway, I hope that helped shed some light onto what it looks like to actually 3D print something. It's really pretty simple, and most of the time having to get up from your desk is actually the hardest part. So that's it for this one. In the next video, we'll look at what the requirements are on your model, on your tools, and your environment to even start printing. Until then, thank you for watching. Make sure to get subscribed. Uh, keep on making, and I will see you later.